Roll the camera. Okay. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we feature an interview with a very peculiar looking gentleman. Scene one, take one. Kuro, welcome to Argyle News. I'm Liam. And I'm Lad. An ex zookeeper introduces us to the latest product that is supposedly good for our health. We hear about a skating addict who's been grinding and flipping ever since he was a pup. But first, the world mourns the death of an eight-armed octopus who had the football world in his tentacles. The football world is devastated. Paul the famous octopus has died of natural causes in his German aquarium at the young age of two and a half. He rocketed to worldwide fame when he predicted the correct outcome of all Germany's seven matches. He also managed to predict the correct outcome of the final between Spain and the Netherlands in the World Cup in South Africa. He did this by eating a bit of food out of a flag box bearing the flag of the winning team. German fans turned on him, threatening to eat him, when he rightly predicted Spain to beat his home country in the semi-final. Paul's rise to fame was so amazing, he even starred in a Chinese movie and has his own range of merchandise. A memorial will be held for Paul at the Sea Life Aquarium in Germany, featuring a video of, a video of his most beautiful and moving moments, as well as the presents he received from around the world. Here's our on-the-spot reporter, Brianna, with Paul's keeper, Julie McDee, at the aquarium where, sport, where Paul spent his final days. Hello, my name is Brianna, and this is Julie, Paul's keeper at the Sea Life Aquarium in Germany. It is said that the Germans threatened to turn Paul into calamari after he accurately predicted the loss against Spain in the semi-finals. Is this true? Yes, we did have a few protesters outside the aquarium and we had to employ a team of security guards to guard Paul's tank. It was a frightening time for everyone involved. Where will Paul be buried since he was born in England and brought up in Germany? As this is where Paul spent his last days, we will bury him in a humble grave outside the aquarium. It is there that we will hold a memorial for this amazing creature. I heard that there were several other animals that tried to get in on the act. Why did you think Paul was so successful? I'm not really sure. Octopuses are incredibly intelligent creatures. I guess this one was just special. Thanks, Julie. And that's all from me. Now back to you in the studio, Lad. An interesting interview. Thanks, Brianna. And now a story that will get you rolling. Move over, Tony Hawk. We now hear about a 60-pound pro skater who is addicting to the sport of skateboarding. Tillman, a skilled duck bulldog, has been pop shoving in Axel Stalling since he was a pup. He's an adrenaline junkie. He now holds the world record for the fastest ever skateboarding dog. Tillman loves skating. He rides the entire day and is literally attached to his skateboard, chewing it day after day. Tillman has even managed to chomp through his third skateboard in his short pro skating career. Along with skateboards, one of his favourite fruits is apples. This bored crazy canine never ceases to amaze the sporting world. Now, over to our roving reporter, Keegan. Thanks, Led. I'm Keegan, and joining me today is Ron Davis, the owner of this incredible canine. How long has Traffic Tillman been skating for? Ever since he was a pup, and now he's five, he loves to jump and spin all over the house. I hear Tillman has broken the new record for the fastest 100 metre skate by a canine. 19.6 seconds, I believe. Am I correct? Yes, you are. He literally skates all day. It's almost impossible to keep him off his board. He literally chews it up. So how does Tillman prepare for the day? Well, his unique warm-up routine is to chew the wheels. I think that's how he lubes the tyre pressure. Well, tomorrow I'll be spending the day with Ron and Tillman, but until then, it's back to you, Liam. For those of you who aren't fans of cow's milk, we have a story about a new type of sloth milk with ten, ten times as much calcium as anchor milk. Josh Weaselby has become an overnight millionaire. Josh, an ex-zookeeper, was cleaning out the sloth cage when he came across a white syrupy substance on the ground. In an unexplained moment of madness, he got down on his hands and knees and lapped it up like a dog. He described it as being sweeter, as his mum, sweeter than his mum's goat milk. He took a test tube of the milky liquid to a local scientist, and when the results came back, he fainted with astonishment. It was a breakthrough in the milk world. 
has reported as saying in this week's Woman Weekly that his next mission will be to make cheese out of sloth milk. Let's cross to our on-the-spot reporter who has more on the sticky situation. Over to you, Connor. Thanks, Liam. I'm here with Josh Weaselby, the ex-zookeeper, who initially discovered this who initially discovered the substance. I can't believe you actually bent down and licked it up. What on earth made you do it? To be honest, I was completely dehydrated. I fell over and all I could do was just lap it up. How do you go about milking the sloth? Well, it's just like milking a cow, really, and you need a crew, because without a crew it would be much harder. Well, how do you get up every morning at 5am and milk the sloth? My mum is amazing. She, she motivates me to wake up at 5 o'clock every morning to milk the sloth. She's amazing. Thank you, Mum. Wow. Now we go back to Andrew with the weather. Thank you, Connor. Starting in the far north, a completely unexpected tropical storm in Kaitaia with raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. Moving down the island in Auckland, there'll be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions until lunchtime. But those are the conditions and you'll just have to accept them. In Central Hawke's Bay, the weather will be occasionally changeable and occasionally not. We, really, we have really no idea what will happen. Wellington will have another capital day. There will be no wind at all and the day conditions will be so pleasant they will actually be classed as extreme. In the top of the South Island, Kaikoura can expect to have a good day. Meeting friends for lunch, going for a swim, or reading the newspapers. But whatever you do, try to stay indoors, as the weather will be just terrible. A real mix for Christchurch, where excessive rainfalls hit, along with some unreasonable rainfall, sensible wind, and moderate thunderstorms, and a smattering of very angry snow. And in the lower south, Dunedin will be frosty and cold, cold until the late morning, or the sun will pop over for a visit. That's all from me for now. Good night, New Zealand. I'll spot you tomorrow. Back to the news desk with Liam and Lad. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again next time. From the whole team at Argyle News, good night. Ladies and gentlemen, roll the camera. Okay. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we are featuring an interview with a very peculiar-looking gentleman. Scene one, take one.